Okay, here is another passage. So today we mainly talk about how God's nature and grace help us to have victory, help us to do greater things. And this third message is about how to enter God's plan uh, because of God's nature and grace. Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So here, Paul urges the brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer the bodies as living sacrifice, to offer the whole life to God. That is, this is holy and pleasing to God, and this is our true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, do not follow the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that our mind is transformed by God. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Then we can find out God's will is His good will, His pleasing will that will please God and please people. And perfect will is a perfect will that will bless our whole life, that our life can enter into a, a better and better condition. Okay, explanation of the passage. God's plan is good, pleasing and perfect. So here too, uh, please include this explanation of the passage in your message that uh, we want to base our teaching on the passage. So we want to explain the passage. God's plan is good, pleasing and perfect. It is pleasing to God and to people. It is perfect and the best for our lives. God's plan is the best and it's pleasing to God and to people. And the passage explains how we can enter God's plan. The way to enter God's plan is by offering our bodies as a living sacrifice and not conforming to the world and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And entering God's plan is not too difficult because to submit to God is not too difficult. To be, not to conform to the world is not very difficult. And to be transformed by the renewing of our mind is not very difficult. It's only difficult for people who are not willing to put down their sins. If we are willing put, to put down our sins, then it's not difficult. Here I have a picture again. People who think that they have to make plans for their lives and ministry and be successful are under pressure. So people think that they are the one who make plans. Now we do make plans, but the point is, is we want to make plans according to God's plan. We want to find God's plan by praying, asking for God's guidance. So we ask God for guidance so that we find God's plan. And we pray to God to give us the wisdom to discern what is the right plan uh, instead of making plans and make sure it will come true by our own power. It's not by our own power. And God wants to make His plan come true. God wants to make His plan come true. So it's God's heart that His plan will come true. So we don't have to worry about the plan. We just worry about, not worry, but we just submit to God and obey God and love God and follow Him. And then He will make sure that we can enter God's plan. The moment we obey Him and love Him, then we can enter God's plan. So when people, they think they have to make plans for their lives and for the ministry, then they are under pressure. For instance, some people, they have plans for the children, for themselves, uh, and then they don't know whether it will come true or not. But when we say, God, you guide me, I'll follow you. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do. Then they will say, God has a wonderful plan. I don't have to worry. And then people who know that God has a wonderful plan for their lives and they can enter God's plan by following God have confidence. So when they know that God has a wonderful plan for our lives, He has a plan it already. And they can enter God's plan by following God's by following God and loving God and obeying God and God will help me to enter His plan when I want to. When we want to enter God's plan, God will help us. 
then these people have confidence in God and in the in the future in their life they know that good things will happen to them okay the theme now first we want to write a theme for each passage each message that when you because for each Bible passage there can be different themes now here my theme is how to enter God's plan there can be other other um, other theme possible for instance the destructiveness of conforming to the world that will talk about how conforming to the world is destructive and it will take us away from the wonderful plan of God and we can bring destruction that's another theme and there can be another theme like uh, how to be transformed by the renewal of our mind or the benefit of the renewing of our mind how to do it and the benefit of it so those are possible themes uh, from each Bible passage there are different possible themes for instance the Great Commission uh, the, the theme can be go and make disciples okay another theme can be do not be afraid take care of the fear of evangelism so this is on the fear and then thirdly the presence of Jesus when we do evangelism to comfort us the presence of Jesus and also the importance of teaching people to obey everything Jesus has commanded that's part of the Great Commission it's not just to, to uh, bring people to believe in Jesus but also to teach them to obey everything that Jesus has taught us and also another theme is go out of the church to do evangelism go to the people to do evangelism another one is do evangelism to the whole world so that will be about mission so there can be different themes from each Bible passage so here my theme is how to enter God's perfect plan okay so first is the negative and positive examples of people most people make plans for their lives they think that their plans are the best for themselves they do not realize that God's plan is the best so even Christians very often they make plans for their life instead of asking God to guide them so that when they want to make their own plans they have no guarantee of success they don't know what is going to happen but we want to seek God's will in every step Lord guide me guide me help me to submit to you help me to to offer my body as a living sacrifice that I do not conform to the world and also that my mind is renewed by you so that I can discern your will more and more there are people who are conformed to the world they, they just think of the world they just think of how to earn more money how to get a beautiful wife uh, how to be successful in do, doing things then they are just making their own plans and they and if the plans is against the biblical teaching then it's even worse if the plan is just to have more money uh, just to uh, uh, take advantage of other people and to become famous now even pastors sometimes they just think of I want to have a big church now it's not wrong to have a big church but some people think it's most important to have a big church uh, it doesn't matter how the quality of the people are the most important is to have a big church that is a wrong wrong uh, direction so that is their own plan and some people follow God's plan and their lives go to a higher and higher level and they can bless many people and they are also blessed by God so if they seek God's will then they can go to a higher and higher level God's nature and grace God has a wonderful plan for our lives written in his book so Psalm 139 16 to 19 that all the days of our life before one of them came to be were written in your book and how precious are your thoughts O Lord so all the days of our life were written in his book so this is his nature that he has a wonderful plan and he wants the plan to come true in our life Two, 
God can work all things for the good of those who love Him. That all things work for good for those who love Him. He can make things happen to bless those who love Him and raise their lives up to a high level. So all things work for good, including good things and even bad things. So when good things happen to them, it's for their good. And even when bad things happen, even when they have an accident, even when they lose some money, even if they, when they have sickness, all this will be for the goodness of those who love Him because these people will trust in God more. The more they trust in God, God will work more things in their life. God will do more wonderful things in their lives. So it's very important to understand that it's most important to trust in God and obey God in every area of our life. And then God is pleased with us and then He will bless us. Instead of just saying, God, uh, I just want everything to go smoothly. We don't just want to, to do things smoothly. We want to obey God, submit to God. That is the most important thing. Okay? Three, God wants to help people enter His plan. So God wants... Uh, so the nature of God and He wants people to enter God's plan. Remember, there are four points I said from each Bible passage we can look for God's nature. First, His, so look for His, His nature and, how, and second, how He wants us to have that. And then uh, he, he is, and also how we can live out, how we can live out God's nature. And then four, uh, he is pleased with us when we live out His nature and He will reward us. So from any passage, we can look for these four sides of God's nature. First is four aspects. First is to discover God's nature and grace and law. And then second is God wants to give us that nature in our lives. And thirdly, um, how we can live out that nature of God. And fourth, when we live out that nature, God is very, very pleased with us and He'll reward us. Okay, why many Christians don't enter God's plan? Because they think it's best for them to plan for their lives. They follow their own flesh instead of following God's plan. Two, they think that God's plan means suffering and sacrifice. They don't want to suffer. They won't, don't want to sacrifice for God. And actually, even when we suffer and sacrifice for God, we'll gain more. We'll have more peace and joy and God will bless our life more. Now, now I know that in Africa and in many places that the, uh, the situation is not good that because of COVID-19. It's getting worse in some places and there is a lot of restriction. The solution to that is that we trust in God more, we love God more, to rely on God more and ask for God's blessings. When we enter God's plan, no matter where we are, we want to bless people, we want to help people, we want to strengthen Christians, we want to do evangelism whenever possible, then God is pleased with us. So our whole life, if we follow God, He will bless us. So I hope that we all believe that. To follow God is the best way to bless our life. Three, they don't have a close relationship with God. They don't manage their lives. So the relationship with God is not good. And also they let sin and negative thinking and emotions and let people influence them so they have problems in their life. So they cannot enter God's plan. Four, they just pursue God's plan with worldly ways. For instance, I said earlier that some pastors even try to build up uh, the miracles by witchcraft which is hated by God. So that's not God's way. It's worldly ways. Or some people just push people, pressure people to bring more people in. Instead of pressuring people, we can tell them, when you bring people to Christ, God is very happy with you and God will bless your life. You'll have more and more peace and joy when you, when you uh, bring people to Jesus. So I hope we all encourage people with God's grace, whether to take care of our own problems, our burdens, because God carry our burdens, so we don't have to carry our burdens. We can have peace because God is a peaceful God and He gives us His peace. 
we can be joyful because God is a joyful God. He gives us joy and He provides for us. He helps us so that we can have joy. So everything we do should be motivated by God's nature and grace. Okay, how we can enter God's plan? See that God's plan is the best for us. First, believe that God's plan is the best for us. To offer our bodies a living sacrifice, do not conform to the world, be transformed by the renewal of, of our mind, then we will enter God's plan. Three, build up strong relationship with God, care about God's kingdom and have compassion on people. So have a strong relationship with God, then we'll be blessed by God all the time and care about His kingdom and have compassion on people and seek wisdom from the Bible and from God. Okay, challenge. God's plan is beyond our imagination. It's the best that can happen. It's perfect in every way. It's best for us. Our lives will go to a very high level when we follow God's plan. So we, we challenge the people. God's plan is the best for you. His plan is high as the heaven is above the earth. So great is His, you know, his plan, his, that His plan is better for us. People think that they can enjoy their lives more when they follow the world. Actually, that will bring destruction. When they follow the world, they actually will bring destruction. So it's best to follow God's plan. God is responsible for our lives when we follow His plan. So He is responsible for our lives. And do you want to enter His plan? So He is responsible when you we follow our, our God's plan and then God is very happy with us and He will bless our life. Okay, so I hope from these three examples that we see that to motivate people with God's grace, our nature and grace will not only help people to have a strong spiritual life, have more peace and healing, but also would raise up people to serve God. So some people think that you know, motivating people just with grace, people would be just rely on God and don't do anything. Um, actually, it will raise up soldiers of God because they know that God wants the ministry to grow. God wants to save more people. God wants to bless more people. God wants to use us as soldiers of God. So when we follow God and obey God, God is very happy with us and He'll bless our life and He'll bless our whole life and He'll bring blessings to us. So, so, so I hope that you see that we always want to motivate people with God's nature and grace. We also remind people of the law that if we don't obey, there is always a bad consequence that there will be he who sows to the flesh will from the flesh reap destruction. There is always destruction when people, when people uh, follow the flesh and uh, do not sin anymore lest the worst thing will happen to you. So when people sin, the, less, the worst thing will happen to them. But when we follow God and love God, Good things will happen to us and God will bless our country. God will bless our world through us. So hope we all trust in God and also do these assignments, please. Uh, because just watching the, the teaching without doing an assignment is not going to help you. Uh, you need to do the assignments to write down the assignments uh, to choose a passage. Now I want to explain this again. God's grace, it doesn't just mean salvation. I said motivate people with God's nature and grace. Grace means all any kind of blessings of God. Because there are some people who wrote assignments to me. Every time they explain salvation again. Now it's okay to explain salvation. But when we are talking about something else, when we are talking about evangelism, raising people up, then then we're not talking about uh, bringing people to Jesus, uh, Jesus' salvation. So God's grace is not just salvation. It's any kind of grace. So any passage you can find God's grace. For instance, uh, have hope in God. Hope in God. How can that link to God's nature and grace? Because God loves us so much that He has hope for us in our lives and in heaven. 
So Christians all have hope because God is a good God. He has a wonderful plan for our life so we can look forward to the future. And why don't many Christians have hope? Because they just look at the failure, they look at the problems, and they don't have a close relationship with God. Therefore, they don't have much hope. And God's nature is that He's a hopeful God. He always gives us hope. And then, why, uh, how we can have live out, uh, live in hope. We trust in Jesus' promises. We trust the Bible's promises that, that there is hope for Christians. There will be hope of uh, that our life will go higher and higher. We can bless more people and also we will we'll be rewarded by God in this life and in the future. So we have hope every day. We have hope every day. We know that our life will go better and better and higher and higher. Now, it doesn't mean we will get richer and richer. It means we have more joy and more strength, more wisdom, more power. For instance, if we preach about wisdom, wisdom comes from God. It's God who has wisdom, so He can give us wisdom. God's wisdom, you can see that in God's creation, in God's work in people, so people, He can change people's life. Even very stubborn people can be changed by God. Even great sinners can be changed by God. So. God has the wisdom to change people. But why don't many Christians have wisdom? Because they follow the wisdom of the world. They just want to pursue money. They just want to be smarter than other people. And instead, they will lose wisdom. And then, uh, how we can have wisdom of God? Read the Bible. The Bible is full of God's wisdom. When we trust in God, obey God, we'll have more wisdom. When we relax in God, let God do His work. We know that God will do wonderful things. Then we'll have more wisdom. So all this, um, any area we talk about, any Bible passage. Now even about the last days, if we have a message about the last days, about the suffering in the last days, how we Christians should stand up, what's God's grace? God's grace is, even in the last days, in the book of Revelation, when it talks about all this suffering, it's all in the hand of God. The seven seals, the seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven bowls, they, all, they were all initiated by angels, not by demons. So it's God who put this great tribulation in the world. For what? So that Many people see the fulfillment of the Bible prophecies and know that the end of the world will come and will wake people up. It gives us a chance to explain to people this are the fulfillment of God's plan in the last days. And also, Christians have to trust in God more because, because there will be the, uh, the, the seal of the beast. And if we don't have the seal of the beast, we cannot buy food. We cannot do any business. So how can we have food? We have to trust in God totally. So in the last days, Christians will trust in God more. When they trust in God more, they have more time praying. They actually have more power and God will bless them more. God will provide for them in a supernatural way. Maybe they don't need to eat. Or maybe God will give them some food. Or God will mix you know, something, turn the stone into bread. So God can do that those kind of things. So, the Great Tribulation have the reasons that God have His wonderful plan even in the Great Tribulation. God can do wonderful things even in the Great Tribulations. And we can see God's power, that God will give us power and God will speak to us to guide us what to do and what to say. So that's God's nature and grace in even in the Great Tribulation. And then, Many people are afraid, many Christians are afraid because they're not ready. Because they don't trust in God's goodness, they trust in their money, they trust in what they own. But instead, we should trust in God only. And how can we trust in God? From our daily life, when we pray to God, we can experience His peace and joy and love. We know that God is with us, God is blessing us. 
God will protect us. How God has provided for us in the past, He will also provide for us. So all this gives us confidence and also trust in the Bible, that the Bible is God's Word and it has given us many promises. So we know that God will keep His promises. So these are ways that we have confidence in God even in the Great Tribulation. And then we have victory by the blood of the Lamb and also the testimony of our mouth. That when we give testimonies of Jesus and when we trust in the Lamb, the, the blood of the Lamb, then we have victory. So any, any uh, Bible passage, we should always let people know the goodness of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. So this is what I mean by grace. His ability to help us, His wonderful plan in the most difficult times, His wonderful work in all times, His provision, His wisdom that He gives to us, His talents that He gives to us, His wonderful plan and guidance of our life. All these are His grace. So I hope you all, un un you all understand that. So that when we talk when we preach, we always talk about God's goodness and how we can live out that goodness. Not just God's goodness, but how we live out that goodness. How we uh, demonstrate God's grace and love and power by our lives that, that we trust in God all the time and live out His nature of love, grace and joy and peace and wisdom. Okay, God bless you. If you have any questions, please ask me. And God bless you and use you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's close with the prayer. And please stand up in the prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you stand up, you can feel, perhaps feel the swaying of the body. Thank you, Jesus. The swaying of the body that comes from Jesus. Because the Bible says that in, in Revelation 117, when John, uh, the, the apostle, saw the glorified Jesus, he fell to the ground right away. And when Saul, in the New Testament, saw Jesus, also he fell to the ground. And the soldiers, when Jesus said, I am, they also fell to the ground. So in Jesus, in God's presence, people can fall down. And if it's not so powerful, uh, or when people are not so open, then the body will sway. So you stand up and relax. And then you also train people to be sensitive to the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You love us all the time. You are with us all the time. You are full of grace and mercy and kindness and goodness. You are powerful and you are wise. And you have everything in your hand. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, your goodness, your grace will motivate us. Everything is from you. You are good God. You are wonderful God. We trust in you. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify your name. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Help us to trust in you. Help us to relax in you and believe that everything we do, we, we do it because of the motivation from God's nature and grace. You are full of, full of wisdom, full of power, full of, full of joy and full of planning and uh, full of provision. You are a prosperous God. You have everything in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And you love us all the time. You love us all the time. You want, you want to bless us all the time. You are with us all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We love you. We worship you. Please help us to understand God's nature and grace so that we can glorify your, you because of your nature and your grace all the time. And we can motivate people with God's nature and grace to follow you and love you and obey you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. We love you, Father. We adore you, Father. We like you, Father. We rely on you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We like you, Lord. We like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You're so good. We trust in you. We want to glorify you. We want to tell people how wonderful you are. So please motivate us with your nature and grace so that we know your nature and grace is so beautiful, so wonderful. You are a wonderful God. You are a good God. Hallelujah. You bless our life. Lord, Lord have mercy upon Africa and many countries in the world 
that is suffering from COVID-19. Lord, provide for us. Give us provision. Open the way. Lord Jesus, stop, uh, stop this uh, COVID and also prepare our heart for the last days. We know that the last days will come. Give us strength and confidence in you that we are not afraid of anything. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your name be glorified. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. God guides you and use you. And hope you always say, I live in the grace of God. I'm, I'm uh, living in His grace and I enjoy Him. I'm motivated by His grace to follow Him. And God is happy with me. And so my whole life is pleasing to God. So I hope we all live like that. And then we motivate people with God's grace that people will enjoy God and like God and enjoy God and know that God is happy with them when they serve Him. So they will be more motivated to serve God. At the same time, they realize that when they don't follow God, there will be bad consequences. When they don't serve God, there will be bad consequences. So the main motivation is from God's nature and grace. But there is a secondary reminder from the law when we are lazy. When we don't obey God, there will be bad consequences. But I hope that is not the main motivation. If people are like that, then they are like animals. They have to be beaten to, to carry the load. But we want to serve God willingly. That we say, Lord, I want to serve you. I love you because you are full of grace and mercy. And when I love you and follow you, you always bless me. So I want to follow you all the days of my life. Okay, God bless you and God be with you. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.